Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Nez. I'm a first year medical student studying at University of Malaya. And in this video, I will be talking about my top tips for medical school interviews. I'll be timestamping everything in the description box below so you guys can skip to the parts that interest you the most. At the end of this video, I will be sharing with you my experience when I was going for my interview at University of Malaya. So do stay till the very end for that. Without further ado, let's get on with the video. Number one, keep calm at all times. This is very important because the medical school interviewers will be looking at how your temperament is and how you are able to cope in a stressful situation. I know that sitting in front of a panel of doctors at medical school interviews is very, very nerve wracking. But at the same time, it is very important for you to stay calm even though you are very nervous because a uh, quality of a doctor is to stay level-headed even in the most stressful of situations. Some people do have certain habits that they might have when they get nervous. For example, some people they you know fiddle with their fingers, some people put their hands in their pockets, some people start stuttering. So one way that you can stop yourself from doing that or even figure out that you have these nervous habits is by practicing in front of the mirror or recording yourself answering some of these questions and go through the recording. Another thing that you can do is also prepare answers for some of the most common questions. Since these are the most commonly asked questions, there's a high chance that you might be asked this question as well. So this is what I call the momentum effect. So if you're able to answer some of these questions well, your confidence will start to boost and you'll have a greater tendency to be able to answer the next questions well, even though you're not as prepared for these questions. So there are certain questions that are very, very commonly asked in medical school interviews. One of them is, tell me about yourself. This is usually a question that is asked at the very start of the interview. Another question that they might ask is what are your greatest strengths or weaknesses? And another question is where do you see yourself in 5 or 10 years? So these questions, it'll be quite hard for you to answer them right off the bat. So it's very important that you have like at least an idea of how to answer these questions. So what you can do is make a Word or Google Docs with all of these common questions and write out like either brief or detailed answers to these questions. I recommend that you write out like a brief answer to all of these questions just so that you don't sound scripted on the day itself. It's very important for you to prepare answers but at the same time not sound scripted. You can always find all of these common set of questions online. I'll try to leave a link down below to one of the lists that I used when I was preparing. My third tip is to practice, practice and practice. So after you have prepared your answers for some of the most common questions, the next thing that you have to do is practice. Practicing your answers will help you prepare for the day. It will keep you calm on the day itself. Some of the ways that you can practice is practicing in front of the mirror, recording yourself, speaking to the camera, or practicing with your friends. In this quarantine situation, I understand that it's going to be hard for you to you know, meet face to face with your friends. You can always meet your friends via video call and you guys can, you know, take turns answering the questions and some of the things that you can ask your friends to comment on is your posture, your body language, um, whether you have any nervous habits, your style of speech, etc. By practicing with your friends, it's really a win-win situation. You guys are gonna help carry each other and both of you are helping each other improve. This will help you have stand a higher chance of getting into the medical school of your dreams. Number four, be confident about your achievements. So a lot of us are really, really shy when it comes to talking about things that we have done, things that we are proud of, because we feel like we are boasting and we're kind of shy. But don't be shy to talk about your achievements. The reason why you have been chosen for this interview is because they have seen your achievements and because they want to know more about it. They want to know more about you. The panelists want to know more about you. They want to know more about what you have done and they want to know whether you're suitable as a doctor. Be confident and proud of what you have achieved because you have been chosen by the medical school based on what you have written in your resume or your personal statement. Number five, be proud of what you have achieved but don't be boastful. So there is a fine line between being confident and being boastful. One way that you can avoid 
sounding boastful is every time after you talk about your achievements, talk about what you have learned from these achievements. For example, if you say that I was a leader in my school's volleyball team, don't just stop there. Talk about what you have learned from that. When you're talking about your achievements, this shows that you're a capable person. But at the same time, it also shows that you have taken the time to reflect on what these achievements mean to you. Because you're talking about the achievements without being boastful, so you're letting the doctors know that you have achieved this, these things, but you're not sounding too cocky. So when, you are, when you're elaborating on what you have learned from these achievements, you try to relate it back to medicine. So for example, when you say that you are the you were the captain of your school's volleyball team and after that you elaborate saying that that you have learned leadership skills or team building skills. Talk about how that can help you in your medical school or in your life as a doctor because doctors have to work in a healthcare team. They're not working alone and they are the leaders of that team. So they need to learn how to interact with their team members and they need to learn how to build up the morale of the team members when, when things seem to go south. Always try to relate it back to how, how your skills are going to help you in your career in medical school. Alright, moving on to number six. Prepare things to talk about yourself. This is a little bit different from my second point because this is more about talking about yourself instead of preparing answers for common medical school interview questions. So in this part, what you should be preparing is more about your journey to medicine, important events in your life that has led you to medicine, and important things about you that you think is unique and that will set you apart from other people, your co-curricular activities, etc. So it's important for you to prepare some small answers for that because a lot of the times people are really shy to talk about themselves, especially when they are suddenly put on the spot. So it's important that you prepare some small answers so that you don't get nervous when you're asked about these personal questions about yourself. Number seven, don't be shy to talk about your side hobbies. So a lot of us might have some side hobbies that we have been involved in. And this might not necessarily be related to medicine at first glance, but, but if it's something that you're proud to talk about, then don't be shy to talk about it during the interview because it will help you stand out from the rest of the candidates. It would be even better if you have awards to back up your side hobbies. So for example, if you won awards at a national ice skating competition, or if you were a national champion in karate, or if you have a YouTube channel or a business or anything that you're, like, that you're interested in and that you're proud of, then talk about it in your interview and, and try to relate it back to medicine as much as possible. So for example, if you love to play the violin or the guitar or any musical instruments, then you can talk about how uh, when you're playing the violin or if you're, when you're playing the guitar or the piano, you are better with your fingers and you're better with your hands, your, your hands are more stable. And you can talk about how it will help you in your potential career as a surgeon because surgeons need to have stable hands when they are performing surgeries. Even if, let's say, you have a business, you can talk about how in your business you, you needed to interact with people from all walks of life and how it has helped you to uh, learn how to communicate with different types of people and it has improved your communication skills, your persuasion skills and persuasion skills are really important when you want to you know, uh, convince your patients to take up a certain treatment that you think is beneficial for them. Yeah, there are many, many, many ways that you can, you know, relate things back to medicine because, you know, it's not about what you're doing, but it's about the skills that you're getting from these side hobbies. So these skills can definitely be related back to medicine. My eighth and final tip is for you to research about the university. So at the end of the interview, the doctors may ask you uh, whether you have any questions. This is the time, this is the opportunity for you to ask about the university. And this will show the doctors that you're genuinely interested in the university itself. So what you can talk about is, if for example the university is research-centric, then you can ask about in what year can you start participating in research projects? Or like what kind of research facilities are there? Uh, if you know that the university adopts problem-based learning in their curriculum, then you can ask more about that. 
This is also a, a small way that you can stand out and leave a lasting imp impression, especially since at the end of the interview, because this will show the interviewers that you are interested. And this question, like not everyone, not all other candidates are asking these kinds of questions. So it's definitely helpful for you to ask these kinds of questions that will help you stand out. All right, so these are all the tips that I have for you guys. I genuinely, sincerely hope that these tips benefit you in some way. Let me know down in the comments below which universities you've gotten an offer for interview from or whether you have any other questions for me regarding interviews or med medical school or anything in general. So my interview was online, it was through Skype because I was in Singapore and the interviewers were in Malaysia. So basically in my interview panel there were four doctors and that was kind of intimidating because uh, I actually had more doctors in my panel than the other candidates and each of them basically prepared their own questions and they took turns asking me questions and most of these questions were scenario based because um, for University of Malaya they actually um, have an MMI approach or multiple mini interviews approach for their med school interview these MMIs are usually you know physical you have to like go to every station but in my case because I was uh, you know in another country that wasn't possible. So instead, the doctors basically prepared um, PowerPoint slides where they gave me a scenario and they asked me, you know, how I would respond and they, and they gave me like a little bit of time to answer these questions. And there were quite a few questions that I wasn't prepared for. But thankfully, because I prepared for some of the more commonly asked questions through the momentum effect, it did help me to uh, maintain my confidence and not get too nervous. Um, and also it's really important for you to be honest. If you don't have an experience in a certain topic, then you can honestly tell the doctor that I don't know how to answer this question because I've never experienced this before. There was actually a question like that where they asked me about a certain scenario and they asked me like, to talk about my own experience and I said that I actually don't have such an experience so I, I, I can't talk about it. There was no way that I could, you know, answer that question without lying and the thing is that I am a very very bad liar I I don't know how like every time I lie it's just so obvious so so yeah basically I, I just told them truthfully that I had no experience in it and yeah other than that there were a lot of decision making kinds of questions and it was like a lot of scenarios and so basically for UM there are like a lot of questions that are like you know the types of questions that are normally asked in a panel interview and there are also questions that are normally asked in an MMI. So for me, it was a mixture of both. It was quite an interesting experience because I've never had an interview online before and for something as serious as this, which is like about medical school, having it online was quite an interesting experience. I remember I was coming home from work that day because I was working after my A-levels and my interview was at 3 p.m. and I took an early leave from my work just to come back home and attend that one hour interview. Yeah, it was actually one hour. It felt like ages actually, but it was just one hour. I think the, by the next week or in less than a week, I got an email from University of Malaya and I don't know why but I just had a bad feeling from UM because I thought that since I wasn't able to answer that one question about my experience I, I told them that I had no experience in that I thought that you know they might not accept me but so when I when I saw the email I was prepared to open the email and read uh, that you know I'm sorry but you weren't but you're you were unsuccessful or something like that but when I opened the email it said congratulations you have gotten an offer so that was, that was, alhamdulillah, you know, everything just have everything happens for a reason and it's best to just, you know, be yourself and, yeah, be yourself but be prepared, <laughs> that's what I would say. Thank you guys for watching this video, if you liked it, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and comment down below what universities you have gotten an interview offer from and also let me know what kind of videos you want to see next in, on my channel and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!